every brand needs like a hit, like one thing that it's known for, or like the takeoff item. It can be annoying, but it's like, it gets the ball rolling and then you can like play with it. Being entrusted with Nike to sort of reapproach 10 different icons, I took that like as like another major design project, not like a sort of, let's just color them up and put them back out into the market. Let's almost think about it like a student would. You know, I still feel like I'm a perpetual like kid at school. And that's that's first thing that I wanted to deliver because when I was a student, all that I wish I knew now is that one person would have told me like one uh, like ounce of advice. There's all these sort of shortcuts that you can take. And so that's what this literally this whole presentation's about. These red slides are cheat codes. <laughs> Basically, if you can answer them, you uh you basically give yourself a cheat code, and that's like the sort of 2.0 of these talks that I'm using. And it's things that I've had to learn. I basically work at a feverish pace in a self-serving way just to find my signature. Like, what's my DNA? Every architect, designer, artist that I look up to, you know, whether they were doing period paintings or buildings in their early career to the end of their career, there's basically a through line. So what I would challenge you in your work, no matter what, is go back. You know, go back to when you were like, that your earliest memories or the way that you thought to organize something, the way you thought to organize your closet or what colors were your favorite back in that sort of like early rationale before you sort of learned too much. You also have to have mentors, like dead or alive. You have to sort of connect with some body of work or someone who formulated a thought and an aesthetic and then build yours upon that. What most people won't tell you is that the people that you look up to didn't invent it themselves. You know, everyone has this sort of like, uh, I call it like getting your brain <laughs> reprogrammed. Like once you sort of learn a thought process, you can actually see yourself in that and add to it. And so obviously I have a mentor, I have a sort of thought process and aesthetic that I love, but then once you learn the, the ethos of why, the aesthetic, why you love the aesthetic, you dig deeper and then you know how to turn the wheel left or right. So it's important, you know, that's why I often reference things of not ashamed at sort of recognizing these great moments before us, but take anything and add it to the year 2017, it should be different. It should feel like we can collectively agree on it, and that's what I, that's what I focus on in a number of projects. Being entrusted with Nike to sort of reapproach 10 different icons, I took that like as like another major design project, not like a sort of, let's just color them up and put them back out into the market. Let's almost think about it like a student would. I think it's important not to be precious. That's what this whole thing is. Like Nike, another dream project for me. And I was like, I have to hit this out of the park. And all the architecture kids can sort of catch a vibe. A lot of this is like model making. That's where the, this is at the same time that I came up with that whole putting sculpture on a bag. Where that was like just me finding sort of new space. And that's when I was like, you know, a shoe isn't a shoe to me. Like I'm not approaching it as a shoe. And I think maybe that's why I found a little bit of like open space is that I was just looking at it like an object. I always thought if you worked linearly, then you have no room. You know, do opposites. It just feels better. But then that space in between gives you sort of a new experience that you can apply and problem solve. That's why I think I work on so many things at one time. I couldn't just do one project like day in, day out. I think it's actually not healthy. One of the greatest lessons that I've learned in building sort of like my sort of career path in like streetwear or fashion mm -hmm is in an ironic way is like being very concise mm -hmm. you know i think because your life especially like a young life it's like absorbed by like things that you've been into like very passionately mm -hmm. and then you know when you start a brand you can often try to like whip them all together to mm -hmm. make one big story but it also it surprisingly takes less mm -hmm. for a brand concept the, the less it is the, the stronger it is mm -hmm. the, the more focused the more you know, when your brain starts drawing parallels between, say, like Olympics, uh, Nintendo, and 
anime, then it, it can start to get a little bit like fuzzy mm -hmm. as to like what does the brand really mean? You know, like mm -hmm. the biggest trick in design that I use is just like hyper focus and then repeat. Mm -hmm. You know, make one thing and then it's like a template. Streetwear in a way like isn't fashion mm -hmm. and, you know like there's an ironic debate that could be had about fashion and streetwear you know mm -hmm. they're one and the same they're very different i think for your concept like of course quality is what you're trying to achieve but it's almost like not phrasing it or trying to compare it to something that's Sorry. fashion yeah mm -hmm. you know i think that the longevity of the concept of streetwear comes when, when we all collectively own the exact mm -hmm. like space that we operate mm -hmm. and like if you look at brands like the best streetwear brands that have like that are the most successful mm -hmm. they're they're not Hermes but their their quality doesn't dictate how strong the brand is yes, and nor yeah. do they like like an Hermes has to like lean on the crutch mm -hmm. of that this is the best quality mm -hmm. because that's what the that's whole that's what their brand is about they, yeah. they scrap thousands of pieces of leather just to find one mm -hmm. and that's what that's what you're, they're selling mm -hmm. so streetwear the strongest brand they're sort of not None of them are like claiming to be like, hey, this is the best made, mm -hmm. you know, cotton or wool or something like mm -hmm. that. To me, it's just about organizing, mm -hmm. you know, and I think like all the different stories, if you want the brand to be this wide, mm -hmm. it needs to be like clear delineation. Like this season is about this one thing, mm -hmm. you know, so if it's about smoking, then I want to see... Yeah, also, like all the imagery for all the different collections, sort of like look the same, mm -hmm. irreverent to the concept that is a part of that one story. So mm -hmm. if it's like about military camo, it should be set on a military base, like mm -hmm. look, not always in nature. Or, mm -hmm. You know, I see there's a, like a variance, but I'm just saying things to like think about. Mm -hmm. Like the smoking thing should be all shot in a convenience store or mm -hmm. something like that. You have to do what you're doing, but you also have to do it in a way so that it grows. Mm -hmm. And to see that growth, it's going to take that strictness mm -hmm. so that, you know, you, you get better, a bigger audience mm -hmm. based on the work that's being done. Mm -hmm. uh, perfectionism doesn't advance anything, ironically. Um, as a creative and as a designer, there's no wrong way to go about the future of your career. The only, the only failure is not to try, you know, and I think that designers, we all have like a, or creators or artists, we have a natural convention to sort of be maybe tormented or a little bit of like an inner struggle is, is the work living up to its fullest potential or is it, you know, is it, as great as the work that you idolize from your, your design idols. But at the end of the day, it's your body of work and it's the, the amount of work and the refinement of that work that'll define who you are as a creative. So, you know, just by this challenge of like not being fearful of perfectionism, of being able to do it, then uh, I resulted in not just one idea that I wanted, but two. <laughs> Coming from where I, where I come from as like a, as a creative person, I like and I challenge as well students to sort of work in a genreless sort of space. You know, just if you're in the illustration department, doesn't mean that you shouldn't be have ideas in apparel or film. And you know, there's basically no boundaries in the real world. You can catch a check from like 17 different creative industries. So you guys are about to be rich. Um, if you work hard, you know, I, th I think um, the amount of freedom that you guys will interface in this new world, I feel that creativity is like highly valued in all different industries. So, you know, keeping your eyes open to those things. Post rationalizing my career and my taste, like, why do I like Helvetica? Why do I like. Um, graphics that look like that or why do I like fashion that feels like that the first phase in becoming a designer is sort of like self-analyzing yourself you know it's sort of digging into like what are your primal emotions and why do you like the things that you like what you can't 
exchange is like the community. That's my first question was like, are your friends wearing it? Like, because yeah, cool. it's, you know, whatever, it can exist, but it, for it to be like a, a tried and true sort of like brand, like I think you want it, and like I think most streetwear brands attempt to be, it has to have roots back in the actual something that was like a community of people. So I think it's important that your brand doesn't like just live like in your apartment with a few people that you know. Should be out there like. Yeah, yeah, it should, yeah other people yeah. should be find like it represents them. Because it can be your concept, but unless there's like, you know, you're finding ways to do community things where, and that just means like four people getting together. Because <laughs> four people turns into 10, and then you do a party, and then there's 30 people, and then there's the line and out the door. All these people post pictures yeah, on Instagram. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's just like, getting, yeah, getting and bigger. it's, you know, when it's more like, this is your community, you know, you should, like, in your pitch, you should be like, I want to represent kids that want to be filmmakers instead of rappers or DJ, you know, everyone wants to be a DJ now, but if you said, like, there is a group of kids that are like, hey, I don't DJ, but I'm a, either a stylist or my art director, I want to make films, like, if you came to me and you were like, I want to represent the next generation of, like, Spike Jones, you know who he is? Yeah, you should look him up. Mm -hmm. He did like those Beastie, he's a legendary. Beastie skate, Boys? Skate, yeah, Beastie Boys, Sabotage video. He's a streetwear kind of skate guy who, you know, just did like Where the Wild Things Are, like Hollywood director, but like everyone wants to be a skater, everyone wants to be a creative director. There's got to be a kid's, you know, every kid that's rolling around with a camera and like, you know, like film camera or whatever, like th that they might not skate, you know, they need a brand too. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. from what I've seen from those videos, whoever those kids are that made that, you know, they should be, I would translate how every kid wants to be like a skater or a DJ or a rapper or a thug. <laughs> and I would just be like, hey, this is the first streetwear brand that's just for the filmmakers and the cinematographer, the, the next wave of, art directors. Cancel the t-shirts, imagine they don't exist, or do this. This is good for the film too. This is good for the master class, for the kids at home. That's how you should have presented it. Like, you know, what's back here is supposed to be with the focal point. And then over here was just about to be like, it's just a laptop, just, just like, hey, there's some probably like, weird porn on there earlier or whatever. You know, like, oh, and then here's my super content. Like, you know, it's just whatever. Yeah, but no, I feel you. Like, you're selling, to me, what your product is, is these videos. You know, that video looks like it's like $8,000. You know, like this t-shirt. Like, you could go somewhere and someone will charge you that much to do, to do that. And the t-shirt is just like, whatever, you know? And it, that's even how you pitched it to me. Yeah, you know, exactly. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The first so that when you put this as the focal point, like this is new, I haven't seen it. There's not every kid running down the street saying, "Oh, I got another T-shirt." You know, like there's millions of T-shirts. Like it's almost impossible. It's the most oversaturated Definitely. time of the human existence of a graphic T-shirt. You know, so it's like it's gonna have to check like so many boxes. And I go through like, I can't even design a t-shirt anymore. Cause it's like, where's the open space? To me, it's like, oh, these, you know, kids can't, like I can do that. Anyone can do yeah, this, definitely. but I can't do that. You know, I wouldn't even know where to start. But then when you put this out, it's gonna like kids in Paris, kids in, you know, Tokyo will be like, damn, like, I've been learning cinema 4D, I love streetwear, but that, you know, t-shirts and all that shit wasn't my wave. I need to get on my film shit, you know?